Hey guys, it's Osama here and I'm back. Now I've heard you want to know how much an engineering undergraduate degree in Canada costs. So if you're an international student or a domestic student in Canada, this video will help you form a budget for not only your tuition, but your food costs, your travel, your, uh, your transportation, your accommodation fees, and you can help uh, develop a financial model that will work for you and stay within your budget. Now, keep in mind that this video is being recorded in the year 2021, so your rates will reflect that. And as time goes on, there may be inflation costs uh, associated. Let's start off with number one, your tuition. Your tuition will make up overwhelming bulk of your costs, okay? This includes your courses, your administrative fees like gym, library, student association, and also other fees like tr transportation at times, uh, some universities cover for you know unlimited use and and a whole bunch of other fees okay now tuition uh, fees for domestic students range in Canada from around seven thousand per year to seventeen thousand and international students range from twenty thousand Canadian to sixty thousand Canadian dollars all right so why is this? huge disparity in between costs. Is there a difference in between the program uh, or can a certain program get me a certain job faster? That is another discussion. But costs are pretty much determined based on the province, your city, university ranking, okay, um, and many other factors. Most of the engineering programs in Canada fall, on the ca fall under the category of accredited engineering programs. An accredited engineering program is a federally accredited uh, program, university program, which is audited and has strict standards that abide by the CEAB standard, the Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board. So these boards go school to school and rate each program and evaluate it based on its difficulty. And there's a huge criteria, but basically it, it forms the accreditation body. Now, what you get out of this is an iron ring, an engineering iron ring. It makes you eligible to apply for a PNG, a professional engineer's license, when you have a certain amount of experience working in, uh, in Canada. All right, let's move on to the six universities that I've chosen for our budget breakdown. Four of these universities are located in Ontario, uh, which is a province that has a bulk of the university uh, programs for engineering. Uh, two of them are located in provinces like Saskatchewan or Manitoba. All right. So let's start off with the rates. Uh, rates go from top to bottom, uh, highest to lowest. All right. And you'll see Waterloo at a whopping 17,000 for domestic. Whereas the lowest rate is University of Manitoba, which is around $7,400. All right. So University of Waterloo is around $10,000 more per year, okay? So these costs are per year for an eight month term, two semesters. Uh, this does not include the summer semester, okay? International students, on the other hand, $61,000, all right, for Waterloo and $20,000 for University of Manitoba. And you'll see Manitoba is around three times less in terms of cost. So if I was an international student, I don't know, I would, I would kind of, uh, I would pick wisely. Now you'll see that University of Waterloo and Toronto have a very high rank. Uh, this is due to research, years of being open as well as an institution. But you'll also see Ryerson, which is the same city as University of Toronto, it's a downtown core. So if you wanna have that downtown core experience and pay less, I would, I would recommend choosing Ryerson. Uh, Ontario Tech, it's not too far away from the city. It's located in Oshawa, uh, but also lower rate for international students. So, so there you have it. There's a range of, um, of budgets that are there for, um, for programs, okay? And it really adds up toward the end. Uh, which we will do toward the end. Next is accommodation. Accommodation is the second biggest cost for university students. 
I personally recommend living on residence first year. It helps you build friendships, networks, uh, and also helps you pull resources uh, and utilize resources within the university itself. Residences, if you're living in a shared accommodation, most likely without a wall, two beds, two bunk beds, you know, you're sharing your kitchen. It's, it, you don't have too much privacy. It's around seven to $10,000, okay? That's for eight months. Now, on the, on the, same, on the same hand, uh, you'll see a single accommodations, which are private, uh, you know, private, you have your own room, and you know this may come also with the meal plan it's around 10 to fifteen thousand dollars now is the privacy worth it i don't think so uh i think it's actually more fun uh living together with um uh, with another roommate because you are more likely to share your network you're more likely to make more friends you're more likely to have more fun to be honest and i lived in my first year in a shared accommodation and I really, really had a blast. So I would really recommend living in a shared accommodation and saving that money. All right, so housing is around four to $5,000. Students usually move into housing after their first year, once they once they find a good group of friends that they can live with, they end up getting a, uh, getting a home and really, you know, splitting the, the cost uh, for that home. Now houses, they cost you around three five thousand dollars depending on a good you know the good deals that you usually get uh one downside with homes is usually you have to find someone to sublease it if you, if you don't plan to do the summer term at some location it's you know it's it's quite easy like toronto but if you live in more of a uh you know if you don't live in a city then it's a little bit more difficult okay let's move on to food uh, you need to fuel yourself in your undergrad. Uh, engineering is tough. And if you eat like shit, you're going to perform like shit. Uh, don't make that rookie mistake that I made in my first year, which is a diet of Mr. Noodles, Maggie Noodles, and um, you name it. Uh, so you got to eat healthy. And uh, your, your budget really depends on how much you end up spending, how much you end up eating out, and... And it's really about that self-control, right? How much can you control yourself from not eating out? Okay, so for example, in Canada, meals, they range from around $10 to $15. So 10 on the low end, 15 on a good, good size meal, which will get you full. Uh, so if you eat around two meals per day for 30 days, you're gonna spend around 600 to $900 a month. Okay, and that's a lot of money. All right, it's, it's, it's equivalent to rent. So for food, if you wanna make a budget um, uh, per month, I would say go at a budget of around $250 to $350. This is a good budget where you can balance making your meals at home, grocery shopping, uh, and eating healthy, nutritious food, but also giving a leeway for uh, eating out when you do have those midterms, you do have those exams. So that's a good range of, for food that I would keep, okay? If you don't wanna cook at all, if you simply wanna eat out and uh, you're, you're, you're just too lazy to cook yourself, well, you're gonna have to pay around 600 to $900 per month. Uh, so it's it's quite a bit. I would, I would start learning how to cook as soon as you get to university. Actually, start preparing beforehand. Now let's move on to personal expenses. Personal expenses can range from a phone plan. It can also range from uh, clothing, uh, transportation, flights back home for, for you international students. Now let's start off with phone plans because Canada has actually some of the highest rates for phone plans in the whole world, okay? You expect yourself to pay around 500 to $700 per year for your phone plan, okay? And that's on the cheap side. Now, um, let's move on to clothing. You're gonna need a jacket, you need boots, you need clothing, all right? I would spend around $400 on clothing, two to, two to $400 on clothing, but if you're, if you're an international student and you need your jacket, you need your boots, I would increase that budget to around $800, all right? So yeah, you better not be buying Canada Goose here. This is, this is a budget, all right? <laughs> now, uh, let's move on to transportation. Transportation is another cost. 
actually most of the time, transportation costs are covered within your uh, within your tuition. So this includes uh, a, a transit pass for wherever you need to go in your in the city so you can easily go grocery shopping you can visit other parts of your campus um so it's just a really nice uh thing that the universities offer at a pretty good rate so what i would include for transport um, this may include ubers it may include other costs like if you want to go and take uh, the train if you want to travel to other cities so it really ranges you could be spending zero dollars if you have all the if all of the buildings and all of your amenities are nearby you can pretty much spend zero dollars a month on transport all right so flights flights can really range from you know a thousand dollars to two thousand dollars uh most places in the world so that will be included in the international budget for the overview all right so let's move on to income now you want to make that money but just hold on a second undergraduate engineering program is very very time intensive it's not only difficult time consuming but you'll be missing out on sleep uh because of how difficult this program is, how time consuming it is. You have labs, you have assignments, you have reports, you have midterms, and they're all punching you all at once. So my recommendation, try not to work during your undergrad. I know it's really difficult for those who don't have the luxury of having the money on hand to, uh, to not be working, but in case, you do want to make that sacrifice. I know a lot of kids do work part time during their undergrad and they are successful. So if you if you are in that camp, uh, you're going to be making around fifteen dollars an hour, which is the minimum wage at the time. Uh, if you work 20 hours per week, which is uh, which is around part time for international students, uh, you're making around nine hundred dollars per month. OK. This is after taxes, by the way. So now let's move on to the total costs in the domestic category. So if you're a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, you're going to be paying around $18,600 to around $41,000. Okay, that's the range. All right. So it's almost double for your total costs. This includes tuition, food, accommodation, travel, all right? And the cost of your degree will be around $75,000 to $164,000. Holy cows, now that's a lot of money. Now, moving on to the international piece, you're gonna be spending around 36,500 dollars for the budget, 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 universities to eighty. dollars Point five thousand. So this is the top tier, uh, top tier UFT Waterloo, uh, living on the most luxurious meal plan and residence, um, spending spending a lot on everything else. All right. So yeah, and the cost of the degree is around hundred and forty six thousand to three hundred and twenty two thousand dollars. All right. So what you'll see is that. What's interesting is that the high end of the degree cost for a domestic student can actually surpass the low end for that of a for an international student, uh, which is pretty interesting to know. So, you know, whether you're paying back your parents, uh, the bank, OSAP loans, you're going to have to pay back these loans at some point. Uh, interest rates on uh, domestic student loans usually around 6%, 3 to 5, 3 to 6%, okay? They range on how the economy is doing at the time. And engineering jobs for first year, uh, they usually start off with around 55,000 to $75,000 per year. I'll let you do the math on how long it will take you to actually pay back those student loans. Uh, it could be another video idea for me to really break down your budget on uh, developing a budget for actually how much time, uh, depending on your rent, your, your cash in hand, uh, your your liabilities, uh, your assets, like you'll, have, you'll be having a car that you're driving. So uh, the, the next video for me is actually to do a breakdown of that total cost. But overall, um, hope this video was helpful. Uh, please subscribe and 
put a comment down below. Uh, undergraduate programs, a degree is very expensive. Uh, this, this ring um, and this piece of paper, they cost a lot. And I think developing a budget ahead of time really saves you from the headache, just saves you from the headache. It, 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 it lets you know how much responsibility you're taking on that financial responsibility. So uh, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and uh, tune in next time. Thank you.